Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Golden Gloves Chat Show. With me is Rok Knapp, the Razor Rok. We haven't spoken for a couple of months since so your last last to Hoggy Garcia Perez. You 20 professional fights in now, only two losses, number two in South Africa, 26 years old. How's life treating you since we last chatted? Um, look, it's been good. Obviously, the um, you know the unfortunate loss that I took, you know, it was a little bit difficult to deal with in the beginning, but you know, I got over it, I, I dealt with it and unboxed everything that was, you know, internal with me and dealt with it. You know, I surrounded myself with my loved ones and, and that really did help. But life is good. You know, I'm, I'm healthy. Um, things are going well for me. Um, you know, I've got an amazing partner. We're expecting a little one. I couldn't be happier, honestly. So so in the greater scheme of things, life is good. When is your baby due? Due on the 15th of December. There's been so many dates uh-huh. that have changed. Um, but the latest one that we've got is the 15th of December. So it's it's coming close. It's exciting. 15th, eh? It's nerve-wracking. So hopefully it's time. just after the fight. I hope, it sta- I hope he stays in there. I always, I always I talk to him every day and I say to him, hey, little guy, you better yeah, just stay yeah. in there. Just do me a favor and stay in there. Uh, but whatever happens, if he decides to come early or, or whatever, we'll be prepared. Um, you know, as much as I'm nervous and, and, and you know, quite anxious about it, overall I'm more excited than anything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it'll be a great present after the fight for sure. you know, a nice win and then I get to set exactly. down and get ready for my baby boy get a good win and have a baby and that's the it 2024 ends in style exactly so rivalry reloaded on the 6th of December you fighting Adonis Cabo Quinta from the Philippines have you been watching any of his videos I haven't been watching anything um, it's difficult to find some stuff on him um, but we've been pre- preparing you know accordingly dealing with with southpaws and working a game plan yeah and obviously, southpaw is, is a different kind of training. Correct. Correct. How do you prepare for a southpaw? Well, typically, we keep everything the same. You know, there's a few additions that, that, that we add, and then there's a few things that change. But holistically, nothing crazy. Um, that's, what we, that's our approach. Keep things the same. You know, box a southpaw as I would an orthodox. Obviously, just watch for their, their, their lead hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just pull off to the left hand side and, and make sure that we're responsible defensively, keep those hands nice and tight and, and work high angles and we'll be yeah. good. So while you, you mentioned defense, let's talk about it. We spoke off air, you and I chatted in the gym as well. Yeah, we, I, you said to me originally you were a defensive fighter, which I actually enjoyed, and you had your hands nice and high, and then you started lagging them a bit. And, but it's going back to basics, yes. isn't it? Which you're doing now, and you're doing it pretty well in the gym. Yeah. Talk to us about the basics with the defensive. Yeah, stuff. that's that's it. I mean, in the early career, early in my career, I was a lot more defensive. You know, I used a lot of footwork, and 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 I was a big mover. I was quite responsible with my hands, and and mm. didn't really risk anything. Um, you know, as I went on to my pro career, I started playing a little bit more and and risking a little bit more, which. At times proved well and at times didn't. Um, but I learned from those mistakes. And yeah, like we said, we spoke off here, you know, just going back to the basics and keeping it simple is the best thing that you can do. Nothing mm. fancy, nothing mm. crazy. Basics and boxing 101 always wins. And, and off the back of those basics, you can start to do other things. Mm. You know, don't to get too careless. Don't try and get too fancy. Just keep it simple and, and that'll take me further. And I must compliment you watching you lately in the gym, your defense really looks good you're very you're trying very hard and like you said to me early on as well it feels so much better it if does. you just pick your hand. <laughs> it, so, it makes yeah. the job easier doesn't it it makes it a hell of a lot easier you know i have to if, if anything it makes you move less you know mm. you're always mm. in a good position to fire mm. to defend mm. um which as the rounds go by you can just do more you can be more um and again, with a good defense, it, it just pays dividends on the later later rounds. That's that's what I felt. And of course, sparring. you've been sparring with the, the, the new WBA Intercontinental Championship, right. Wante Equipment. Yeah. What, what is that like, the sparring with a guy like Shimon? It's always been high level, um, even before he won his, all his belts. You know, yeah. Like I said, his dedication to the game is second to none. And um, you know, I'm very grateful that we were able to share rounds. And um, yeah, he did great in his fight. It was a bit dramatic at the start. But uh, yeah, he pulled himself together and and, and produced well, a good. Well, he did a rock nap there, yeah, but yeah. he, dro- he dropped his <laughs> yeah. hands and he, yeah. he paid the price he for that. He paid the price, but he got himself together got and himself he did what he together. needed to do and, and brought on the goods, which I was ecstatic. I mean, it, it's so important, and I mean, I can never stop telling you guys that to be the, a, a good defensive fighter. You guys offensively are brilliant, and even Shavante, but 
to be defensively good as well is so important. Yes. Because, I mean, that's how you can have longevity Correct. as a professional Correct. boxer. I mean, and, and, and that's one of the things I also, you know, I speak to Vusi about is that there's no need to be so excited to let your punches go and attack. You don't have to be like that because what happens is it starts to compromise your defense and it starts to compromise being safe. There's times to, to attack and there's times not to attack. I don't have to always attack. And that's, yes. that was one of my things and, and why I would get caught is because I was always on the offensive and always wanting to attack that I started to neglect being patient, making mm. sure that I'm mm. defensively mm. aware and responsible. And so we're finding that balance and, and it's working well. And obviously the whole idea is to, to hit and not get hit. But yes. after you throw a combination, it's yes. to get the hands back. That's it. Get so, the hands back up uh, and uh, get out uh, of it's there. It's not just you. It's, it's so many fighters or Shavante. Well, after they throw a combination, they seem to, you can't even enjoy what you're doing and you're not thinking about getting the hands back. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's, about, it's about hitting and it's about getting, getting back. Yeah, getting back, yeah, getting those hands back and, and getting out of there. You know, don't take pictures of your work, admire your work. <laughs> don't take pictures, yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's what I'm trying to, you know, drum into my mind. Do your work, get out, don't admire and don't take pictures. Yes, yeah, so keep going. Okay, so Ravari reloaded a fantastic tournament on the 6th of December. The undercard, Brian Taser fights Bonking Corsi in Slapu. That's a good fight, good fight. Uh, in the light heavyweight division. What do you think yeah. of that fight? I think that's going to be an uh, entertaining fight. The Tasers always bring it. They always bring <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, they do. Eh? And um, I like that Taser. He's very good. He's, he's, he's action-packed and he's game. He's game yes, as yes. anything. He's always entertaining to watch. And then, of course, uh, Lennox Lewis is uh, bringing a youngster that's almost like his adopted child. We're going to talk a lot more about him. I'm going to interview him actually on the show when he comes in from America. And he's fighting on the undercard, uh, Kesna Davis. So we look forward to seeing him. Yeah. He'll be training in our, our gym as well. And Le it's like Lennox Lewis awesome. as, as an adopted son. Awesome. Very the same weight as you, so you can obviously excited. help him. He's six and oh, guys like you and Shavante can teach him and help him a bit. So we look forward to that. And then your stable mate, Charlton Malajika, fights on the undercard for the WBA Pan-African title yep. in the Bantamweight division against Sabelo Sebenkulu. Who's seven and oh good fight that also i think charlton has put on a lot of work um and i think it's nice that he gets a title opportunity he gets a reward for his hard work he's always in the gym um and i've always rated him a hell of a little fighter you know also game is anything so i think he'll he'll pull it off on, he, on and you know it's interesting as well look that when uh, lennox came out your last time and he's coming out again he couldn't believe that these two brothers ricardo malajika and charlton malajika can hit each other so hard or can, yeah. can spar with each other. I he spoke about the Klitschkos, <laughs> but the Klitschkos sparred a bit, but they never hit each other mm -hmm. hard. From what I understand. The, the yeah. two Malajikas, they whack each other. They go for it. And I'll tell you that because last week I actually watched uh, them spar just before I had to spar. Yeah. I watched them spar. And I was like, I was shouting, hey, you are two brothers. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, they yeah. do not care. They go for it. It's almost like they're trying to one-up each other. It's obviously yeah, yeah. healthy competition. It's it healthy. was entertaining to watch. And some of the good chuckle. Uh, Ricardo was having his he, having his fun. So was Charlton. It was it was good competitive sparring. But I'm like, I would never be able to do this with my yeah. brother. Those two are just <laughs> otherwise. And they, and they did say they'd actually like to fight each other yeah, before so the end of their career. So that's quite interesting. Yeah, the Malachika brothers in, in the gym. Yeah. Keanu Kupman uh, is, is moving up. He's fighting for a South African welterweight title. Yeah. That's a nice one Definitely. against Bonky uh, du uh, Dunku. How do you see that fight? Game? Uh, again, I mean, I always root for my guys and my teammates. Um, you know, he's been, he's also, he's like his brother, very silent, very humble, um, but he does the business. You know, if his, his last outing was a bit unfortunate. It's, it's in no way a reflection of his abilities. I mean, I share the ring with him. I spot mm -hmm. with him. He's a sharp, sharp guy. He's mm -hmm. very clever. He's, re he's, he's very mature for his, for what his record suggests. And I think he'll be the new SA champion. And I think it'll be a nice way for him to end the year off and on a high like that. Great, so I mean the ball just gets better and better. Yeah. And then we have for the WBC Silver Strawweight yes. title, South African minimum weight champion Sia Kusi fights against Bevan Sabanda. Bevan Sabanda also trained by your trainer Vusi Matolo in yeah. the gym. Um, that's a good fight. Bevan seven and oh yeah. and, and Kusi seven, two and one. How do you see that fight going? Hmm? Busy night for Vusi again. Yeah. Um, we've all got to do our part and, and make it worth it for him. Uh, but I think Bevan, you know it, he's he's such a good kid. Um, and he's such a talent. He he really he immerses himself in the gym and, and mm. in the game. He lives it. He breathes it. He sleeps it. Um, so I think he's extremely deserving of it. Yes. I mean, I've seen pictures of him that he's posted where, as a kid, he had cardboard cutouts of a WBC belt. Really? Yeah. So well, this is I his think, time. Eh? I think it's his time. Um, you know, the confidence that that he's projecting is 
it's it's awesome to see, and I can't wait to mm-hmm. to see him achieve such a dream like that. Um, he deserves it. Uh, he works for it. And again, such a good kid. I really, really want him to succeed. And I think he will. I think he yeah. will become the WBC champion. And uh, yeah, prove, okay, his, well, that's, prove his career. That's a nice statement from his stable mate. Going for that WBC silver straw at title. Bevan Sabanda against Sia Kusia, that is. And then, of course, the main fight, 10 rounds international. Who do you think wins at a rock nap? And Adonis Cabo Quinto. There's there's no doubt about it that I'm coming to take a win um, in any fashion that it is, whether it's you know the distance or an early night. You know I've got a lot to prove, and I need to get my career back on track um, for many reasons. But also, yeah, it's almost to, like a comeback for you, but yeah, it's, it's it not is, a comeback. Yeah, it is. I need to get a win under my belt. I need to get out get out there again. You know, I was saying to my missus last night while I was sitting in the ice bath trying to recover that. I'm excited, I'm, nerv- I'm nervous for the fight, but I'm, I'm more excited. I just want to get in there. I want to get the first round under the belt, mm, mm. Um, you know, f- just get comfortable, settle in and, and do what I'm, I believe that I can do. Um, I didn't get a chance to do that in, in my last fight. Um, and again, credit to my opponent. He was just a better man. But again, I don't believe it's any reflection of the talent that I am and the, and the fighter that I am. And I'm going to do that again on, in, in, you know, in December and prove mm. and remind people that I am, I am that talent. I am that guy. Um, and yeah, whether it's a distance or a stoppage, I'm coming to just do what I need to do, handle my business, and uh, get back to experience. Guys, are well, 26 fights, only three losses, mm. so 16 KOs, not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we look forward to that rivalry reloaded. That's on the 6th of December in a Golden Glove Show at Empress Palace. Rock Nap headlining. Thanks, Thanks always like a chatting to you. We'll talk soon before Definitely. the fight. Definitely. Thank you, Rock Nap. For me, Brian Mitchell. Thank you for watching.